Um, okay, so next we'll move on to the Hungarian algorithm and bipartite, bipartite graphs. So a bipartite graph is another type of network diagram. And usually what it's used to represent is a um, sort of relationship between different um, sort of vertices, or not usually vertices, but different types of... Um, okay, so just to sort of give you a bit, bit of an overview is... A bipartite graph is used for allocation problems. And what allocation problems essentially are is, for example, if we have a project coming up and we have five people that are willing to, you know, work on that project. And there's five different tasks that need to be performed. And each different person can perform that task in a different time or in a different overall time. So essentially, um, what you would need to sort of work out is... Um, what would be the best allocation such that we complete the project in the minimum amount of time? And that is what the bar part type graph can be used for. So these are very simple bar type graphs. So for example, what this bar, part, bar type indicates is that person A can perform task W only. Whereas person B can perform task W, X, Y, and Z. It can perform, he, can, he or she can perform all the tasks. Person C can only perform tasks um, W and task Z, whereas person D can only perform tasks W and task Y. So if I was the person or, um, responsible for doing the allocations, what I would need to see is if person A can only do task W, then they must be allocated to task W because otherwise we don't have because otherwise we have one person just doing nothing, right? So that's obviously going to be a waste of time. So therefore, um, this would be the allocation for A. Then if we were to look at B, so B can do all of the tasks, but task X can only be done by person B. So therefore, we must allocate person B to task X because he's the only he or she are the only one that can do it. So sometimes it's a matter of if they can do the task or not. Sometimes it's a matter of who can do it the fastest. And we'll have a look at that when we look at the Hungarian algorithm. Okay. So what about task C? So task C can only be done by... Um, so task C can actually be done by... Um, so person C actually can do both task W and task Z. However... Task Z can only be done by person B and person C. Person B has already been allocated, so therefore, task C must be done by person Z. And therefore, the last one, task Y, must be done by person D. So that is how we would sort of work through this network. Um, okay. So now we'll be looking at the Hungarian algorithm. So the Hungarian algorithm is usually when we'll be looking at, um, sorry. So Hungarian algorithm has seven steps involved. And why do we use the al um, um, Hungarian algorithm is because sometimes we have a certain time associated with a certain task. So for example, in this table over here, we have four people that are working on a project um, and the project has five, uh, four tasks. And the per time taken by each person in minutes is listed here. So Wendy can do task A in 30 minutes, um, whereas she can do task B in 40 minutes, task C in 50 minutes, and task D in 60 minutes. And we will use Hungarian algorithm to um, sort of work out the optimal allocation. So first step of the first step of the Hungarian algorithm is for each row. Um, is to work out which number is the lowest. So for example, in the first row, the lowest number is 30. So you would subtract all the numbers in the row by a 30. Similarly, for the second row, it's also 30. So you would subtract all the numbers in the second row by 30 and so on. So once we've done that, we will get this as the new um, table. So here we will use tables to actually do, or matrices sometimes, are really useful as well. So matrix subtraction, matrix addition is going to be really useful if you can convert this table into a matrix and then use that matrix to do calculations on your calculator. Next step is to subtract the value, uh, sorry. 
Um, so next step, step two, is to put the minimum number of lines required to cover all the zeros. So we can draw the, num the lines in various different ways, but you have to draw the minimum number of lines to cover all the zeros. So for example, instead of these lines, what if we draw it like this? Zero, 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 and zero. So this won't be the minimum number of lines because we can actually cover two zeros by drawing just one line. So therefore, um, you have to find the minimum number of lines. And once you've done that, what you need to do next is, um, um, okay, so once you've done the lines, if the lines are less than four, so in this example, since we only have four people and four tasks, um, the total number of lines needs to be four at the end of the Hungarian album. But if they're less than four, or if we have five tasks, and if they're less than five, then we continue with step, um, steps three. But if it is, then you can continue to step six. And we'll have, and we'll get to step six soon. So step three is to find out the minimum number in each column. So once you've done that, so I think only in row C, um, the minimum number is ten. The rest is just zero. So we can just subtract ten from the numbers in each column. Um, then again, you would form the minimum number of lines. In this case, you're going to get three lines again. So since it's not um, so isn't this such a really low number? Again, you would need to, um, what was it? So since it's not four lines, you would again need to work through the process. So the next step is to um, find the smallest uncovered value in the matrix, uh, sorry, in the table. So in this case, it's 10. And what you would do is you would subtract this number from all the uncovered numbers. Now I know there might be some confusion because what if you drew the lines a little bit differently? Um, doesn't matter. Like whatever your uncovered numbers are, like it will work the exact same way. So whatever your uncovered numbers are, you subtract the value of this number from all your uncovered values. So for example, in this one, it's 10. So you would subtract 10 from all these numbers. Um, and then once you've done that, the next step is to add this value to where the lines intersect. So wherever the lines are intersecting, so remember this point and this point, you would add that value. So you would add 10 to that value. And then we get this matrix at the end. So now if you draw the minimum of lines, it will have to be four, like this. So now you're essentially done with the Hungarian algorithm and now it's all about the allocation. And I'll show you how this, how from this you can go to the allocation. So what the zeros actually indicate is that Wendy can perform tasks A, B, and C in the minimum amount of time. So from there, it would be really great if you could, you know, do a bipartite, bipartite graph. It would be really helpful in certain situations. So Wendy can do tasks A, B, and C in the minimum amount of time. If we look at Xenophon, then he can do tasks B and C in the minimum amount of time. So we can draw a line there in the bipartite graph. Yolanda can do task D in the minimum amount of time. So there's just a line between um, Yolanda and D. And then Zelda can only do task A in the minimum amount of time. So now we can perform the allocation using the steps that I've shown above. Um, so therefore, Zelda, who can only do task A, must be allocated to task A. And that will be 20 minutes. So you also look at the time from the original table of how much it's going to take. Because most of the times, the question is going to ask you to work out the minimum amount of time to complete the project. Next step is to calculate, um, what was it? Yep, so, um, so your lander, who can only do task D, will be allocated to task D. So 30 minutes. Well, not that it can only do task D, but it can do task D in the minimum amount of time. Wendy can either do task B or task C, and then Xenophon can either do task B or task C. So it doesn't really matter who you allocate to what for Wendy and Xenophon. Most of the time, this is not going to be the case. It's going to be really, really specific. So it doesn't really matter because most of because either way, you're going to get the same answer. It's up to you which one you choose. And therefore, if we add that up together, the, total, the minimum time is going to be 130 minutes. 
So that's how you would use a Hungarian algorithm to work out the minimum alk alk the best allocation.